Hey y'all, Mama Snark here. I am recording a video that I am so excited about. We're getting a puppy. Um, for those of you that have been around, followed my Instagram and my YouTube for a while, you may have known that we lost our sweet Saki dog right after Thanksgiving. She was a Chesapeake Bay Retriever and our family just hasn't been the same since. So after much deliberation and kind of thinking on it and the kids asking us or telling us one of our kids, if not both of our kids, telling us literally every single day, I miss my Saki dog. It's been weighing on us. So we've decided with the age that our black lab is, we have a black lab, Lily. She is seven years old. We decided now was probably the better time to go ahead if we're gonna get a puppy because Lily is still young enough and spry enough to be able to like pop up really quickly if she's annoyed, like she doesn't have joint issues or anything like that yet. Um, kids are at a good age, they're six and four and a half. So we kind of feel like it's better to do it now versus later. That way Lily can kind of help train the puppy and guide it along and kind of show it the ropes while she's still young enough to be able to do so. And also to be able to like play with the puppy and or get up very quickly and escape the puppy if she's had enough. So all of that being said, <laughs> this is my haul overview, kind of showing you everything that we are doing to prepare for bringing a puppy home. I will also say caveat, this is going to be specific to bringing home a large breed dog. I don't have experience with small breeds, mini breeds, toy breeds, anything like that. We are large dog people. So this is just kind of everything I've gotten to prepare based on our past experience of having large breed puppies before. Um, like I said, our black lab Lily is seven years old now. <laughs> so it's been a hot minute since I've had a puppy, <laughs> but if I remember correctly, and also I'm a researcher, I love to research. I love to plan. I, you know, I, I do all the readings and all of the everything to prepare. So this is kind of everything that based on our past experience and our knowledge of having dogs and puppies and large breed, specifically puppies, everything that I've got. Also, another caveat is I want to kind of remind you that a puppy is a commitment. It is a decade plus commitment. So this is not something that we take lightly. This is something that we have, like I said, we have thought about it a lot. We've done our research, we've planned, we have had puppies in the past, like we have dogs, we're dog people. Um, we're not the type of people to get a puppy and then realize, oh my gosh, this is a lot of work. And give it away like we understand that dogs are a lot of work and bringing home a puppy coming from someone who has two small children it's akin to having a newborn and a toddler again like you have to wake up every two hours in the middle of the night when it's brand new and take it out to potty so it knows where to go to the bathroom at you have to exercise it you have to play with it you have to train it a puppy is a commitment not something that we take lightly so I'll begin based on all of that. Um, I have two different hauls here. One of them is gonna be from Chewy.com. That's gonna be our like pet food and some like bones and treats and things like that. If you have not used Chewy before, if you either number one already have a dog or number two, you are thinking about getting a puppy and that's why you're watching this video, I cannot recommend Chewy.com enough for food and pet meds. Um, this is not sponsored or affiliated in any way, shape or form. <laughs> Chewy, if you're watching this and you would like to collab, I would love to do so. <laughs> but this is just based on like my personal experience. I cannot rave about Chewy.com enough. Their customer service is amazing. Products are amazing. Um, I use auto ship for the dog that we still have. And when we had two dogs, always used auto ship for the dog food, 50 pound bag of dog food come straight to my door like clockwork depending on like what time frame you set your auto ship for you get a little bit of a discount using the auto ship if you spend more than fifty dollars it's free shipping same thing with pet meds when we take our dogs to the vet to get like you know the routine checkup and shots and all that stuff 
you, I have set up my pet meds auto ship through Chewy. So basically I pick out the meds that I want or based on what the vet recommended, submit that and then Chewy, like you select your veterinarian's office on there, Chewy contacts the vet, gets the okay that you have the prescription, dog's in good health, it's been checked, the vet okays that prescription, Chewy sends the pet meds. Come straight to my door, usually at a much better discount rate than buying it through the vet, which is unfortunate, but I get a discount using Chewy and, and I know they're reliable, so that's who I've gone with in the past. So the first haul here is gonna be everything that I've gotten from Chewy.com. The second haul here is gonna be some things that I have picked up on Amazon and a few things that we already had just because we have dogs or have a dog now. But Amazon haul, I'll be able to link everything down below. Chewy haul, just go to Chewy.com and search for what you're looking for. They usually have a lot of good deals going on. Um, like this particular haul, I think I spent 150 total on everything. The bones and like treats and things like that I got were buy two, get one free. So depending on what kind of a like sale or deal they have going on, your total will vary. But first thing that you will need if you were getting a puppy, and I, I'm not gonna be able to move this that far, but dog food. <laughs> this is a, I think 40 pound bag of dog food. This is puppy. Let's see, you can't even see it, but it is large breed puppy formula. If you have a large breed dog, large breed puppy, I cannot stress how important it is to make sure that you're using large breed specific dog food. It's going to have a lot more like glucosamine and things in it that is going to help their joints because with a large dog, their joints are going to need help. Um, they grow very rapidly from puppy size. Like this puppy is going to go from 15 to 20 pounds when we get it at eight, nine weeks to about 60 pounds by the time that she is six months old. So large breed dogs grow very quickly and getting large breed formula dog food is important. It has, like I said, it might be a little bit more expensive, but it has all of those ingredients that they are going to need as a large breed dog to help them grow, help their joints feel a little bit better, help their bones grow a little bit better. So we use Purina One, um, our Black Lab Lily, she is about 80 pounds. We use the Purina One large breed dog food for her, like the adult formula. This is basically the same thing, but puppy formula. So the dog will be on this food for about a year. This one I just purchased like a one-off, but once we get the dog, I will add her puppy formula food to my auto ship order that I already have for my Black Lab Lily's food. So um, I don't know if I said, maybe I did. We're getting another Chesapeake Bay Retriever. Um, Saki Dog was a Chesapeake Bay Retriever. That breed just kind of has our hearts and the Saki Dog had our hearts. So we went with another Chesapeake Bay Retriever just because that's what we wanted. <laughs> but, and we have experience with that breed. So our Chesapeake will be on puppy formula, large breed until she is about one years old. The next thing I got is Burt's Bees puppy shampoo. We have like regular dog shampoo for our black lab and our older dog when we had her, but this is a tearless two in one shampoo and conditioner. Um, it's not like the flea and tick or anything like that because we will get her on flea and tick and heart guard like pet meds and stuff when we bring her to the vet and get her checked out. But little dogs have a lot of accidents. She's probably gonna find some mud and dirt or poop or something to roll around in. She's probably gonna have potty accidents and need to get cleaned. She's gonna need a lot of baths probably. So I went ahead and picked up some puppy specific formula that's not gonna like, you know, hurt her eyes or anything like that because puppies are wild. <laughs> So I got that. Um, I picked up only a few toys from Chewy that were um, on the cheaper end and I just had to have them because they were cute. So I got this little guy for I think about $5 and it's a little Hulk like bungee. You can hear the crinkly. A little ASMR action for you, but it does not have stuffing in it other than like in the head, but the rest of it is just kind of like a tug of war pool toy it does have a squeaker in it um, like I said I think this was like four or five dollars and I just thought it was cute I'm a Disney fan if you are new to my channel and this is the first video you're watching most of my content is like taking kids to Disney and travel related so 
Disney Mama here, had to have it. This one is a Kong. Love Kong because they are tougher and with large breed dogs, they tend to be more aggressive chewers. So Kong, we are from Louisiana. So this is a little alligator and I had to have it because, you know, of course I did. So it's a little bit tougher. Let's see, does it have a squeaker? I don't, yeah, it does have a squeaker. So squeaker, tough chewer, little alligator, just a little, you know, a little stuffy. Um, I will say don't rack up on too many toys just yet until like you meet your dog because our socky dog that we had, our other Chesapeake Bay Retriever that we just lost, she loved babies. Like she chewed on these, she pulled all the stuffing out. She would just put them in her mouth and carry them around like a baby. Like she absolutely loved toys. Our Black Lab Lily has never cared about toys ever. Like could give two flying flips about toys. Has never been into them, has never really been into chewing bones or chasing balls. We call her the big black cat. <laughs> So I would not stock up on a whole bunch of toys until you know if your dog actually likes them or not, just to kind of save you a little bit of money. So I got two from Chewy. And then the next thing that's gonna be very important for having a puppy is going to be teething items. Just like a baby, just like a newborn, your puppy has puppy teeth that will fall out and they will teeth like crazy. So yeah, teething toys. You need something for your dog to chew on. Otherwise, it will find something to chew on, like your furniture or your couch or your hand or your child's hand or the door or the floor or whatever. Like they will find something to chew on to help relieve that pain in their teeth from teething. They will lose their puppy teeth eventually. Um, puppy teeth hurt, y'all. <laughs> if you've ever been gnawed on by a puppy, they are like little needle sharp teeth. So uh, I only got four puppy bones because again we have a large breed dog coming and there she's going to grow very very fast very quickly so she's going to outgrow the puppy bones by the time she's four to six months and graduate to the adult like large breed bones so the first one I got is a bone. let's see if it'll focus this is my favorite bone brand um our sake dog was an aggressive chewer like she literally chewed open a golf ball before an aggressive chewer, like had super strong teeth, super strong, strong jaw, would gnaw the mess out of everything. So I discovered the Benna bones, this shape specifically, like the wishbone shape I love. We had the other one that was kind of like a cradle, but then I've seen horror stories on the internet about jaw, dogs getting it like stuck on their jaws. So I don't do those anymore. I just do the wishbone kind of shape. This is a, I think, bacon flavor. Yes, bacon flavor. And softer for modest chewers. This one is for dogs under 30 pounds. So like I said, our dog's going to be about 15 to 20 pounds when we get her and she will gain weight very rapidly. So a little small bone. They do have smaller ones. If you have a smaller breed dog, I think they have ones for like dogs under 10 pounds and under 15 pounds. So I went with the 30 pounds because she's going to get big fast. <laughs> I got a Nyla bone. This one is gonna be easier for me to hold. So like, I'll get to this later with some of the other stuff, but we have to travel a good distance away to pick her up. We're going on a almost 10 hour there and back road trip. So 20 hours total, about 10 hours in the car with her. This shape I figured would be a little bit easier for me to like hold while she gnaws on it. With Lily Bean, we had the really cute one that looks like a dinosaur, but you know, just another bone for her to teeth on. Same thing, just another bone for her to teeth. I think this is the medium sized. Let's see. Doesn't say on here. I'm pretty sure this is the medium size, but it is a puppy specific. So it's softer because puppies, like I said, they're going to lose their teeth. Their teeth are going to hurt. Their little gums are going to hurt. You need something specific for them to teeth on so that, you know, it helps with that. Um, just one more. Like I said, these were all buy to get the third free. So this one is a teeth and tug. This is more of like an interactive toy. So puppy holds one end, you know, gnaws on it, pulls on it. Us or the kids pull the other end and play with her. So this is more of like a playtime teething toy to help 
get some of that energy out, get the jaws working, get her teeth filling a little bit better. So this is more of like a playful teething toy. Puppy teething sticks, um, puppy specific. This one's pumpkin flavor. It's just little, little like small sticks. This will be a good thing to give her like when she's in her crate or when we're having downtime to just, you know, keep her active and interactive. And then this is another edible like chewing treat, puppy specific. These are, you can tell they're not that big. They're about the size of my hand. As she gets older, we'll get the bigger ones. But while she's a small puppy, it needs that teething toy. And these are edible ones, so it will eventually like, she will eat it, um, but it'll take her longer than like eating a milk bone. So another one of those, just kind of like downtime, something to keep her occupied, get some energy out, work the jaws. And then I picked up a two pound bag. I think this was like $5, two pound bag of very tiny little bones. These are training treats. I'll show you in my Amazon haul. I got like a, a little hip pouch to put some in. So like when we go on walks or we're in the backyard training, they go potty, yes, give them a training treat. They do, they learn a sit, yes, give them a training treat. So this is like specifically for training. They are very small, not like big treats that, you know, you want to take a lot of time with. This is just a very quick, high value reward system. And then that is, I think that's it for everything that I got from Chewy. So now I'm going to move on to my Amazon haul. This is going to be, um, like I said, I kind of price matched um, things from Chewy and things from Amazon. The Amazon stuff, it's kind of stuff that just kind of popped up and I was like, oh yes, I need that. And I just like ordered it because it wasn't any cheaper on Chewy. But you can also probably find all of these things on Chewy. I just did Amazon for them. But first thing is going to be a airtight dog food container different sizes depending on the size of the dog food bag you get. Like I said, I got a 40 pound bag of dog food. This is a 40 pound airtight seal. We have one already in the kitchen, different brand, but same thing for our black lab Lily that we've had since she was a puppy. So it's seven years old now, still going strong. While we were on two different dog foods, we're going to need two different containers, obviously to store both of those. And then once the puppy turns one and it's on the same food as Lily, we'll go down to just using the one again. But I think this is about $35. This one came with, let's see, a smaller one. So like to put milk bones in or whatever, another container to put dog food in if you're traveling and need just like a smaller container. Let's see, it came with wheels, so you can attach wheels to it and it also and it also came with a scooper because you're gonna need a dog food scoop. And it has on there, I don't know if you can read that, but it does have the measurements. Always ask your vet when you get a puppy how much you're supposed to feed it. Don't just like question that and guess it yourself because depending on the breed of the dog and the size of the dog, that's gonna vary widely. So make sure you ask your vet before you just start feeding your dog whatever. <laughs> you don't wanna make it sick. So that is that from Amazon. Next from Amazon, right here behind me, I have a pooper scooper. Um, went ahead and ordered one just because with new puppies, you never know if they're gonna have issues with eating poop. It's disgusting, but some dogs have that issue and I wanna keep our yard clean, number one, so we can go run and play out there without stepping on poop. And number two, in case the puppy has a tendency to try to eat poop, I would like to get it picked up and out of the way so that that's not a thing because you. So it goes down like this, has the top handle, has the rake, scoop it in, comes with these garbage bags. And I'm pretty sure you can use just like bathroom size trash can bags with it. And then, you know, closes up, throw the bag when you're done. Um, I actually ordered two of these. One to keep in the backyard, um, where we're, that's where the dog will be for the most part and where our kids play on their swing set and stuff. And then I also ordered one for the front yard because we go outside in the morning to put my son on the bus and our lab Lily insists on going out there with us and watching me put him on the bus in the morning. Let's see if I can get that out the way. 
and she has a tendency to poop right in the pathway that we take to get from our front door to the bus stop. <laughs> Makes me insane. So I just went ahead and got two of them. They're pretty inexpensive, so I can keep one on the front porch to clean up as poop happens, and then one for the backyard. The next thing I got, haven't tried these before, but they were fairly inexpensive, and I thought it would be a good idea. It's not a pee pad, but it's a, when your puppy has an accident, it's kind of like a fancy paper towel. It's supposed to absorb the puddle like quicker than a paper towel and be a little bit more efficient. And also, so I'm not wasting rolls of paper towels because this economy, y'all, it's not cheap. But with a puppy, that being said, going into my next like item of things or list of things, puppies will have accidents. Potty training is imperative we will start potty training right away. We've potty trained dogs before we understand how it works. Large breed dogs pick up on potty training fairly quickly. So we shouldn't have too big of an issue there. Um, she should pick it up pretty fast. Lily was very food motivated and picked it up like that because she understood she went outside and peed, she got a treat. <laughs> but that being said, accidents are bound to happen. You cannot avoid it with a puppy. Like it's literally unavoidable. So things to help make clean up a little bit easier. Um, we have mostly hardwood in our house, so it's not that big of a deal. We just kind of, you know, quickly clean the puddle up and then Clorox wipe it. But if she happens to go like on a rug in our kid's room or something, make sure you have some kind of pet odor cleaner. We do, um, I'll link, insert our picture here and link down below the kind that we do have because it's inevitable, but you want something that has that pet odor eliminator to get that ammonia out so that the dog doesn't go back and remark a spot. So I grabbed these. I thought that would just be a good idea. Like I said, they weren't that expensive. Next <laughs> items on the list, I picked out several different kinds and two packs would probably be plenty, but I'm extra and they popped up on a good deal. So I grabbed them. Reusable pee pads. I don't do the big pack of the disposable ones for two reasons, or mainly for one reason, I guess. The big reason is they come with like an odor or a scent to them that attracts dogs to pee on them. I'm not sure what the scent is, but all of them have like some kind of specific like smell in them that attracts the dog to pee on them, which is helpful if you are pee pad training if you have especially if you have like a smaller breed dog they can't hold their bladders as long because their bladders are smaller so many people with small breeds to my understanding do teach their dogs to pee pad train so if they can't get to them they'll go on the pee pad large breed dogs they can hold their bladder for a much longer extended period of time large breed dogs can hold their bladders for a much longer period of time so it's especially like the older she gets. By the time she's six months old, she'll be able to hold it for pretty much an entire work day. Between the time that I leave in the morning, I leave after my husband, and then my husband gets home several hours before me. So in that time frame, by the time she's six months old, she should have no problem holding it all day. But while you're training, and if you crate train, these will go on, um, that's another thing I don't have listed here. We do have a big, crate um i'll insert a picture here and insert the link down below for you and we have a like almost crib mattress size dog bed that fits perfectly inside of that crate so these will go on top of that dog bed kind of like wrapped around it and held in case she has an accident in the crate i'm not having to figure out how to wash an entire dog bed or just throwing the dog bed away the pee pads will absorb it and then I can just put these in the washing machine, add some vinegar to it to neutralize the ammonia and reuse them. So that's basically what we use the reusable pee pads for. We are not training the dog to pee on the pee pads. We don't want to like have an area like, hey, if you have to pee, go pee on that inside of our house. We do not want to train our dog that it is okay to pee in the house at all. Accidents happen when you're a puppy, like I said. So we will line the bed <laughs> that's in her crate with this in case an accident happens. It's easy to just, you know, wash it and move on. So I got a couple of different varieties, different sizes, different patterns um, based on what I saw that was on the cheaper end. So I got just kind of like a variety of those. Put those out of the way. So pee pads, like I said, we're not training our dog to pee on pee pads. 
that's a no-go. We don't want to train our dog. It's okay to pee in the house at all. You go outside to potty. The grass is where you potty. But when accidents happen, I can easily wash it. Um, and again, I don't do the disposable ones. Number one, cost efficiency. And number two, um, I don't want that smell to attract the dog to pee on it. Another thing we'll use pee pads for when we travel, we have an SUV, um, Chevy Tahoe to be specific. Our dog Lily, our black lab, has motion sickness and she has a tendency to throw up. So once we're done potty training, we will use these to line that bed and that fits perfectly in the back of our Tahoe when we travel. That's what the dogs lay on when we traveled. Um, so if she throws up like she has on many a many road trips, we will just fold that up, throw it away at a gas station or a rest stop or wherever we go, put a new one on it so that we don't have to like worry about it. So they will get repurposed after the puppy as well for traveling. Next up. <laughs> collars and harnesses so the dog like i said is a large breed dog chesapeake bay retriever breed she's gonna grow very fast very big very fast so i got several different sizes of collars and harnesses for her because i don't know what size she is i can't gauge by the pictures because the breed this breed is super super fluffy so I can't quite gauge like what size she's gonna be. When we got Lily as a puppy, she was six or eight weeks old. I can't remember, it was one of those. She was, you know, right at the okay to leave the mama stage. She was tiny. Like I ended up getting a harness for my sister-in-law that she used on her miniature dachshund whenever he was a puppy. <laughs> so Lily was a little bit smaller and labs are a smaller like bone structure breed than Chesapeake's. Chesapeake's have a very large bone structure. She is going to be bigger than a golden retriever, bigger than a Labrador retriever when she's fully grown. So I'm thinking as a puppy, she's going to be a little bit bigger, but I'm not sure how much bigger. So um, I got several inexpensive collars and harnesses to grow with her as she rapidly goes through them. So this one is a size small. As you can see, I have it let out to like the biggest size that it can go. And then when we meet her and see her and see how big she is, we can adjust the sizing as necessary. And then I also got a, um, this one, I'm doing collars and harnesses because collar will stay on her as soon as we have her and have her name. We're still throwing around some names and we won't name her until we meet her just to kind of see which one actually fits her personality. But once we have a name, we'll go to the pet store and get a dog tag with her name to put on it, her rabies shot tag, whatever we get from the vet to put on it. So collar will stay on her all the time in case something happens and she gets out of the backyard or like takes off somewhere. Our name and number and address is attached to her. Next up is a small harness. So this is gonna be a no pull harness. Puppies come with an abundance of energy. <laughs> lots and lots and lots of energy until you work with them for a while and train them to walk next to you and not pull the leash, which our black lab still haven't, hasn't mastered that. She pulls obnoxiously and has to wear a no pull harness when I walk her or run with her. But this is gonna be, it's you know very simple, so it's not gonna like rub under her armpits or anything. I think it was like $10, but the leash clips here, this goes on her chest, this goes kind of around her chest and around the back end, like under her. So when she's walking, and she's pulling, I'm not, you know, choking her to death. Like it, it pulls on the back of the shoulder blades to kind of let her know, hey, we're not going over there. <laughs> so I got a size small and a size small collar. And then I also got a size medium collar. This one is a little bit nicer because she, she's gonna wear this one for a longer period of time. It has the metal buckle on it, fully adjustable. I have it tightened all the way right now, but it can let out almost to the size of a size large. And then once she's in a size large, I'll purchase her a large collar. But I got the medium and the small already because she's gonna go through them like that. So I'm bringing it with me too because I don't know how big she is. Like I said, I can't gauge from the pictures. So just to be on the safe side. And then this is a size medium harness. This one, she's gonna be in for a little bit longer. So I got one that's a little bit nicer. It has like the ventilated mesh, it has the handle so I can like put my hand on her and hold her close to me while we're training because you have to train a puppy 
<laughs> we have to train her how to walk next to us and not like dart ahead. Or if we're passing a cat or something or a small kid, I can, you know, grab her so she knows like, you know, we're staying right here, we're, we're behaving. Like I said, she's a girl, so I got everything pink because she's a little girl. This is a, let's see, this is a like training treat pouch that I mentioned earlier. It came with a training flicker. So if you're training your dog like to walk next to you, they're walking next to you, mark and reward so that they understand that they're doing the right thing. But it opens like you, it's kind of like a fanny pack. Uh -oh. You like attach it to your waist. It has magnetic open and close. So I can get into it really easily without having to have like a zipper that I'm fumbling with or anything. I just shove my hand in it and pull one out and reward. So I've got that. Like I said, we don't take <laughs> getting a puppy and training it lightly. I, I am prepared. It's gonna be a lot of time and energy and a lot of work, but it'll be worth it when you have a perfectly obedient dog. So training treat pouch there and then leashes i have already i'll insert it here and down below uh i went ahead and got another one that's a two dog like running waist leash so it's kind of like a little pouch and uh, it ties around my waist and it has two hooks and two leashes so i can walk both of my dogs at the same time you know down the road when we get to that point and then i can take one of it off so like right now i just have the one bungee on it and i run and walk with lily now and then I can just add the second one on for the new puppy when we get her but when we pick her up like I said we're gonna have like a 10 hour drive back I got this retractable leash I'm not a big fan of retractable retractable leashes when we're just like walking around the neighborhood and stuff but while we're traveling with her and stopping at rest stops and you know, potentially stopping at a hotel with her. Um, I wanted to go ahead and get this one so that I can like control how far she goes without having to like grab for a leash because as a puppy, she's going to pull. She's going to have energy. Comes with a USB cord because it also has, let me see if I can figure it out. There we go. It has a flashlight on it and I think it also is supposed to go like further I'm not sure I'll have to figure that out oh there we go and then the leash itself lights up and it has the flashlight on it and you can do both or just one so I can take the flashlight off and just have the leash lit up or vice versa um, it also came with a couple of poop bags on this little poop bag dispenser that attaches to it when you're walking your dog at a rest stop or at a hotel, et cetera, et cetera, please pick your dog's poop up, y'all. Don't be that person. When I run, um, like I said, that waist leash that I run with, I keep a couple of poop bags in there because sometimes the movement and stuff will get things moving if she didn't go before we left. But yeah, so this is going to be handy for when we are traveling back with her or when we travel to my in-law's house in Texas the month after we get her, basically, or yeah, like a month after we get her, we're going to be traveling there. So that's going to be better for a small puppy with traveling. So we, that, 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 okay. Um, feeding things. Having a large breed puppy, oftentimes they tend to just gobble their food up in one like hoover motion and just suck it down. And that can cause a sick belly. And then you have your dog puking in your house. I don't want that. <laughs> Um, our dog Lily, we only had to use the slow feeder for a little while with her. Saki dog or old Chesapeake that we just lost, she needed the slow feeder for a while because she would suck it down. So instead of getting the slow feed bowl, because we already have a dog food like stand, like a, a raised feeder, um, I'll insert the picture here and the link down below for you. Um, from Saki Dog before she passed, we will have that for the new puppy when she grows into it. So instead of getting like a separate big plastic slow feeder like we had with Saki Dog, I can just stick this, it has suction cups, into the stainless steel bowl that is attached to the raised feeder that we already have. So this will just suction right to the bottom of that bowl and you know, basically be an obstacle to help the puppy not just gobble her food down in one, one fell swoop. I've heard before that people will drop a tennis ball in it and the dog has to eat around the tennis ball. It didn't work with Saki dog. She would just and spit the tennis ball out and inhale. <laughs> so 
this is a little bit more of a sustainable option for us. We can use the raised feeder and the dog food bowls that we already have. I also prefer, prefer stainless steel bowls. They're a little bit more hygienic and easier to clean. So that, but before she grows into that, I got this one to use with her from Amazon. I'll link it down below, but it comes with like, it's kind of an all-in-one silicone mat piece. So it should kind of stick to the tile floor and not move around because puppies are aggressive eaters and they tend to, to scoot and move and you don't want it scooted all over the kitchen floor making a mess. So it comes with a treat ball. So you kind of just hide little bits of kibble throughout the ball and it's some it's an enrichment toy so it takes them a little bit longer to eat through it and find the toys and keeps them occupied and wears them out a little bit too and also gets their brains going and then the other part this piece comes off so if you don't need it you can take it off or like when we travel to get her I'm just going to take this piece it's a slow feed bowl so it has you see the obstacles to kind of eat around so like when we travel to get her or when we travel to my in-laws, I'll just take this little piece and then we have other travel bowls that we use. And then it just has the stainless steel bowls underneath that do come off or out. That one does too, believe me. It's just suctioned in there really well, but they come out so that you can easily clean them and wash them and clean this and put it back. So it is kind of an all-in-one feeder until she gets much much taller and can eat out of that raised feeder so i got that let's see and then this is kind of like a kong you just put you know the little treats and the little kibbles in there you can see a little i don't know if you can see the picture of the dog doing it but it it's a an enrichment toy they need to roll it around and chew on it and move it and stuff to get the kibble to fall out and it's good for aggressive chewers it's a very very thick kong like rubber so it's just an off-brand kong basically but brightkins is a brand that i have heard of before so just an enrichment toy you can put peanut butter in it but based on having kongs before with stocky dog and putting the cheese whiz or the peanut butter in it it's disgusting to clean and it's very hard to clean and mm, i don't like it so we'll probably just put like the little training treats or the kibble bits inside of that uh this is a snuffle mat ball. I don't know if you've seen the snuffle mats where it's like, it has a bunch of different little felt like flaps and you hide the kibble in it and it just takes them longer to kind of like snuffle like a pig looking for truffles. But this one is a snuffle mat ball. So these pieces pop out and you basically just line this with different bits of kibble and then roll the kibble inside of it and then stuff that back into the hole so the puppy has to pull the piece out and then it can get the kibble. So it's again, an enrichment toy. It is very important, especially with like retriever breeds to get their minds active and to get them thinking. They are a smart, obedient breed. It's not like having a Yorkie or something. Like they need those little puzzles and things like that to, to keep their minds active, keep them thinking. It just, it's overall good for their brain health. This is a, Another one of those like little pool tug of war toys. So it's got a rope on one end and it has a comfy handle for the human on the other end. So when your puppy, you know, pulls like that, you've got a, a handle and I'm assuming my kids are going to want to play with the puppy, obviously. So it'll be a little bit easier for the kids to have a hold of it to pull while the puppy's tugging the other end. And then this is stupid and I shouldn't have bought it. We're getting a Chesapeake Bay Retriever and they're duck dogs. So I got this cute little duck toy looks like a duck has a rope on one end has a squeaker this rubber is very thin she's gonna destroy this immediately but I just thought it was cute and I couldn't help myself don't be me but I had to and then this is a like fetch ball so it's just a neutral color so this is just a neutral color like fetch ball it's a rubber ball it's a little bit more you know sturdier than most that's unnecessary just get tennis balls these are toys and stuffies that we had left over after Saki Dog passed. These are the ones that we kept that were still pretty clean. Um, it smells like our house. Beans, don't knock my camera over. My lab just came inside. Um, smells like our house. 
older toys. So I'm just going to bring a few of these with us when we pick her up. So she has kind of a knows what our house smells like kind of situation. So those are toys that we already had. And then here's another little toy that I had to bring along. And then these I got by accident. These are two inch. It was advertised as like you know, the ball launcher machines, it was advertised to go with that. So I got it and it had a picture of a lab on the description page. Math doesn't make sense to me. So it's saying that it's a two inch ball meant nothing. This is so small. Like look at the size compared to this. It is extremely small. So this is only going to be safe for her to play with for like a month, maybe two months before it gets too small to be like, I don't like my lab Lily playing with it. It makes me nervous because I'm scared it's just gonna go straight down her throat and get stuck. And then we've got to go to the vet or the emergency vet, which I don't even wanna know how much money that would cost. So this was my mistake. They'll be good for the ball launcher and to play for like a month or two, but I'll probably toss most of them. And then for traveling, this is gonna be, if, if you're not traveling to pick up your puppy, Go ahead and turn the video off now because neither of these things will apply to you. <laughs> um, like I said, we live in Louisiana. We are traveling about nine and a half hours to Kentucky to pick our dog up from the breeder. It, coming back, like whenever we got Lily, she was, I think, an hour and a half away from a litter of puppies. So I just held her on my lap that whole time. Traveling nine and a half plus with potty break stops she might not want to sit in my lap the whole time. It might make me uncomfortable. It might make her uncomfortable. She might want to stretch out and have a little bit more room. This is one of those dog car seats, but it has a metal frame to it that you can like unsnap and it folds almost completely flat. So it's not like one of those like plush car seats that's just going to take up a whole bunch of room when we're not using it. Also, I figure when she outgrows this, because she's gonna outgrow this very quickly, it's kind of just a nice like trunk cargo basket. So I can put this in my trunk for when we go to like Costco and put the milk and the, the fruit and stuff like that in it so it doesn't roll around my trunk. So this one I can repurpose versus one of those plush dog car seats you pe see people using that she's gonna outgrow and then it's just a big pile of something I'm gonna have to throw away. So it comes, you can kind of see it has like the the metal poles in it there, but it comes with a mat. Ooh. And then I'll also, I think it also came with a soft blanket. No, that came with a soft blanket. Something came with a soft blanket. Anyway, it comes with a, like a mat. And then I'll also put a pee pad in it to line it in case she has an accident in the car. And like I said, just toss that and get another one. Um, it comes with like these little, things so you can attach it to like a headrest and put it in a seat and it keeps it in the car and it comes with another one that you can attach to the dog's like harness to keep it from jumping out we don't use those because again we have large breed dogs and don't think about it but this fits perfectly I went and tried it to make sure in between our two bucket seats and the and the Tahoe like I said we have a Chevy Tahoe SUV this fits like perfectly between those two bucket seats. So I don't have to take my kids' car seats out of the car when we travel to go get the dog. Um, In-laws are coming to watch my kids, so they're not coming with us. But this will fit perfectly between those. So if the puppy, while we're traveling, wants to stretch out a little bit more and needs a little bit more space, I can put her in here and give both of us a break so she can you know, stretch out a little bit more and sleep a little bit more comfortably. Like I said, I can repurpose this when she outgrows it versus one of those plush ones. And then the last thing that I got, like I said, we already have like a big kennel that we'll set up um, whenever we get her and we start, she gets bigger. We don't use kennels anymore for our lab Lily doesn't need it. And we got it because Saki Dog, when she got older, was having trouble controlling her bladder only reason we have it, we were going to put her in there if there was like a thunderstorm in the forecast because she got really nervous with thunderstorms and would lose her bladder if we were at work and not home to like take her out and give her her calming chews. But we never ended up using it. <laughs> so it's basically just a cage that sat in our house and occasionally like Lily would go in it to hide from the kids and get a break, but we never really used it. So we do have a bigger cage, bigger kennel to use if we crate train. 
Still not sure if we're going to crate train or not. It's going to depend on her and her behavior, if she's well behaved or if she is a mass destruction whirlwind or if she can hold her bladder and potty trains really quickly or doesn't. So that's going to come, you know, after we get her and kind of figure her out. In the meantime, this is a smaller, I think it's like 30 inches by 20 something inches, but it's a portable kennel. I'm not going to fully open it, but it has like the metal support poles in it that kind of like pull out and snap together. So like I said, we are traveling nine and a half hours to get her. So the game plan is drive all the way to the breeder, pick her up, and then drive as far as we can before we crash that night. We're going to have to stop at a hotel. Like we're not going to make it the full nine hours back with her in one night. That, that would be like 20 hours straight driving. <laughs> so we're going to have to stop at a hotel with her. Um, obviously we're going to stop at a dog friendly hotel, but she is a puppy. It will be her first night with us. She will not be potty trained. So it's going to be up on us or probably me because my husband's going to be the one driving to set an alarm and take her out every two hours to make sure that she doesn't potty in the hotel room or in the house when we get her home. So I figured this would just be an easier solution. I'm not going to have her in the bed with me in the hotel because I don't want to risk her having an accident and peeing in the bed. So this is a portable crate option to travel with when we first get her. Line it with the puppy pee pads. Give her, I think this one is the one that came with like a soft blanket. And I might actually bring one of our cheaper, like, you know, those little $3 Walmart blankets. I have one that Beans uses all the time on the couch. So I might bring that one. So it smells like our dog in our house and put that in here. But this is going to be for traveling to get her to use in that hotel room. Again, this and that car seat, if you are not traveling to get your dog, these items are unnecessary. If you are traveling a good distance to get your dog, it might be worth investing in something like this so that you don't have to like travel with the giant crate. Because if you get a large breed dog, you're gonna go ahead and just get the big crate because they're gonna grow into it rapidly. But yeah, so this item and that item are more specific to traveling, but this is everything that I got to prepare to bring our puppy home. Like I said, we've had dogs in the past. We are dog people. <laughs> this is stuff, I am not a veterinarian. I am not qualified to tell you how to raise your puppy, how to train it, anything like that. <laughs> this is just everything based on my past experience, what we have needed with a puppy so that we are prepared to bring the dog home and we are not scrambling to like, oh no, we gotta go stop at PetSmart because that's what we do with Lily. She's over there sleeping. <laughs> but we had to like scramble, we picked her up and we're like, oh my gosh, we need bones, we need a leash, we need you know, a collar that fits her, we need <laughs> puppy food, all this stuff. We kind of just went and got her because I saw her on Facebook, there was a litter of free puppies and I was like, oh, I need her. So yeah, prepared this time. <laughs> so these are all of the things that I have gotten to prepare to bring a new puppy home. If you're considering getting a puppy and bringing it home, hopefully this was helpful to you. Make sure you give this video a like and a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel, ring that notification bell, follow along for our adventures of bringing our new girl home and yeah, introducing her to our family and our kids. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Bye guys. Little bonus footage. There's the beans sleeping right there. <laughs>